So what are the best ways to look after your stick insect eggs? Hello everyone and welcome back to Bug Realms. In this channel we like to discuss things all creepy crawly. If that's something that might interest you, please consider subscribing to our channel. Now, you guys might think, Sam, yeah, you have a lot of phasmids, or you've had a lot of phasmid care videos, things like that. So I've decided today to show you how to look after phasmid over, over being the correct term for stick insect eggs. Now we're going to be going through my three most successful methods to have a higher hatch rate for you guys. And then I'm actually going to do a future video way, way down the line to show you which hatch rate I got out of each method shown. Now, phasmid eggs do take a long time to hatch, guys, so you are going to be waiting quite a while for that next video. So, before I start, I do want to add something very quickly. Not all phasmid over has exactly the same care. I'm showing you a standardized three different way for a majority of phasmid over. Certain ones do require slightly different techniques, such as ones that need to be kept buried, need to be placed in a certain position, need to be kept extra humid, things like that. But this is just my standardized way for a majority of stick insect over. So let's crack straight on with that now. First of all, you wanna get yourself a live food tub or something that you can get your inverts in. This here is a tub that was used for fruit fly cultures. So it's got lots of ventilation, in the sides. Now you want to keep your ventilation in there to stop mold growth. Mold guys will kill off your nymphs inside your eggs. So you really do need to look out for any signs of mold. So method one is the easy one. It's probably the one you guys have seen all over the internet and that is the paper towel method. So what we've got to do is simply place your tub down on a side. Now I've already folded this in ready but you just get some kitchen towel and you place it inside like so. Try not to cover too much of the ventilation holes at the sides. Now you want to give this a light misting. So you don't want it soaking wet guys, you just want it nice and damp. And then you simply place your eggs on the top. Now you can just do this by hand, I've actually put them in a bottle cap because I'm doing this freehand as you can see with the wiggliness. And then just gently pop them in like so and then you pop the lid on guys and then the waiting game begins now what I recommend to do is you wait for this kitchen towel to dry out completely and then you moisten it again I really did just say that word sorry guys so by doing that you are having less chances of mold if you do get mold in here guys replace the kitchen towel if you notice mold growing on any of your over there is none on here for me to show you but all you want to do is get yourself a light paintbrush and you want to simply brush the mold off the egg and it should be fine if you get it early if you've left eggs to grow moldy for a while they are probably already dead now we're going on to method two get yourself another tub so this was a cricket tub so it has ventilation in the sides there and what we're going to actually be using is a soil based substrate like a coca fiber um, what i'm going to actually be using is coca fiber mixed with a little bit of topsoil and a bit of sphagnum moss because sphagnum moss will help with the humidity levels some over require really really dry requirements and others require really really moist requirements i've done it again uh, but overall this this method tends to work for your in between so I've got a tub of this substrate made up here and my empty tub. We're going to just pour that in like so. Wiggle it around, pat it down. And now we're going to moisten this substrate. I'm really sorry. I can't get that word out of my head right now. Sorry, sorry. So as we did last time, give it a spray. It's now misted all around. It is not soaking wet, but it is nice and damp. And then we do the same method again. We get our over and we sprinkle it across nice and gently. So what the springtails will do is they will not damage the egg guys. I know some people have had that as a question. Are they going to harm the eggs? No, what they are gonna do is prevent any mold growth growing on the eggs. Now, if you're still noticing mold growth using this method, what you want to do is either make sure that your springtail colony is still alive and well, or you need to add extra ventilation. You can do so by piercing the lid of the, of the tub, or you can make extra ventilation holes 
along the sides. Do not make them too big guys, because if you do so, then the nymphs when they hatch are going to escape. Now we're moving on to my personal favourite method. Now this method has so far provided me with the highest actual hatch rate from any of my nymphs and it is probably the safest method out there and it's not actually used by a lot of breeders unless they are very experienced. That's not because it's a difficult method guys, that's just because it's not commonly out there on the internet which is why I really want to share it with you now. So method three, you want to follow the same steps of method two, get yourself a cricket tub, get yourself your mixture of cocoa fibre, a little bit of topsoil, get yourself a bit of sphagnum moss in there as well. Another good point of the moss is if you put a very thin layer over the top of any over, very thin mine, it helps the nymphs when they emerge to grip onto something and pull themselves through. So that's that, but we're gonna be doing something a little bit different this time. Let me show you. So as you see here guys, we have a bottle cup. Now what is in this bottle cup, I will tell you, this is vermiculite. You can pick that up at any sort of garden center store, things like that, even certain pet shops. So what I've done is filled a simple bottle cup with vermiculite, and then we have our over in here ready. We are going to put our over onto this bottle cup with the vermiculite. Spread it out just a little. like so. Then we are going to spritz this one just like we did in method two. And then we simply place the bottle cup inside. Wedge it in just a little bit so when you maneuver it, it doesn't tip over. So let me tell you why this has been so far my most successful method. Well, first of all guys, the eggs themselves, in lesser specific species, don't actually like being soaking wet. It doesn't actually help. It's the kind of humidity in the air that is going to aid in actual hatching. So, by doing this method, every time you spritz this one, so maybe once a week, maybe once a fortnight, depending on how damp it was in the first place, you simply take this out each week or so, like I said, give it another spritz, place this one back in. By doing so, you're not getting the eggs soaking wet and the vermiculite in the middle here will actually absorb some of that moisture in the air and provide that around the ova without the ova themselves getting soaking wet. Also guys, if you kind of, like I said, with wedging a bottle cap in, it actually still allows the springtails to be able to climb over and take care of the eggs if there is any slight mold growth or over dampening of the ova. I have actually witnessed this myself. They'll climb into the bottle cap, they'll clean up that ova nice and well for you, and then they will leave again to go back into the moisture substrate. So there are my three methods for looking after your ova. The kitchen towel method, the general substrate method, and a bottle cap with vermiculite method. The way that you don't have to spray the ova themselves. That's the gist of it all guys. I hope that's been of some help to you guys at home. And that's gonna be it from me today. I still have the aquarium footage to show you guys from Nuki, so look forward to that coming up very shortly. So if you are new to this channel, please consider subscribing guys, like the video if you liked it, leave us a comment below. Is there anything you think I missed out? Is there any questions you have, further questions to what I've said? Do you need a, a more of an explanation on one of those methods that I've said? Just let me know and I'll do my best to answer you all. Thanks again guys, take care, bye bye.